Hi, welcome back. So today we're going to have a look at a Volt Mace joystick for the BBC Micro. This came, actually it didn't come like this. <laughs> I was having a look at it, wondering uh, how all this, all this stuff worked. Um, and the, there's like a membrane thing and a whole bunch of brightly coloured buttons. And I merrily took it to pieces and thought, oh, why don't I video all this stuff? I just got carried away and it all ended up in pieces. Nightmare. Anyway, the reason why I, I we, the reason why we're here, where we are, uh, is this joystick came in a box of stuff a few years ago, and it was, it's chopped off. You can see there, it's just it's just been hacked. Um, it's got some weird burn marks. They look like maybe solder, like some like a, a soldering iron is is lent on it or something. I'm not quite sure. Something hot. Um, so it's all a bit melty, but it seems intact. So anyway, this this thing is, as I say, a volt mace that sits over there with with these uh, with this rubber membrane and the buttons on the front, and you have this keypad business. So those those are the fire buttons, uh, which I think are common, and then you've got a keypad here. Now I wondered about these because I'd seen these on the BBC before, and I wondered how they actually worked because I knew that the 15 pin connector, which is a 15 pin D connector is uh, well there's only 15 pins so how was all this other stuff encoded that was interesting anyway so fast forward years later this this thing appeared uh, in a box of stuff it had some um, echo nets uh, had an echo net terminator and a few other bits and pieces anyway there was this and a few of the other joysticks those weird joysticks that were like they, they stick up and they have a little thing on the top they were weird sort of things um, there was a couple of a couple of these ones that didn't have the keypad. Still Volt Mace, which is the manufacturer, but they didn't have this bit. And then there was this one with the keypad, and also this thing. So this is Volt Mace. Uh, what was that Hertfordshire uh, model Delta 14? Um, so anyway, this was an intriguing thing. I didn't know what it was, but this is familiar. That's definitely familiar. So your joystick will plug into there um, and there are there are the, the possibility of having additional peripherals attached so I mean there's there's three there so I think that's that's probably a pass-through kind of kind of arrangement I'm not quite sure anyway that's interesting this is also interesting so on some do, doing some more investigation in order to get the other pin out what happens is you plug the joystick into here and then this goes into the the user port on the bottom of the BBC so the idea is you uh, through some through some programming you can take the output of there of this stuff and and it's demultiplexed and then shoved onto the user port and you can read that in code so you could have the way this worked is you'd have overlays so you, you'd have a game or an application and your overlay would have different functions for different things. So then you could have the joystick and you put your overlay in there, clip it down, and you got you know what the functions are. It's really quite a neat solution. Um, I've never actually seen it in action. Um, I don't know whether this thing works. Anyway, what, what I've got to do is to recreate it, to resolder the end on, uh, and also determine whether the guide that I've downloaded online actually is accurate or relates to this because I don't know whether the colors are the same I need to do some investigation I did start to do some debugging um, to figure out that's not it that's completely different yeah volt may stick there we go get rid of that so I started doing some stuff to figure out what goes where and, and it started to make sense and then it didn't make sense. <laughs> so anyway, I found a, a blog online that talks about how this works. Uh, where is it? Yeah, so this thing here, which talks about how, how these things are grouped together. So you can see here, um, you might not be able to see it, but um, they're numbered from 1 to 10. Okay, So you've got 9 bits there. And then you've got uh, one, two, so you've got 10, 10, and 10. What I mean is you've got your one to nine, actually 11 there, but you've got 10, 10, and 10. So those are all common together. So they're the same thing. So it's a bit weird. Um, 
it has some weird quirks so you couldn't push the fire button at the top there and have 10 because it's the same button but i suppose if you're in a game or something it's a different mode maybe i don't know it might be useful um it could be a you could make a calculator program i suppose but it's a bit odd um so i'm not quite sure what's going on with this anyway the important thing is to try and um uh, solder it back on i guess so this is the schematic for it which shows the two potentiometers which form part uh, of this business here this ha actually has some uh, in in series um actually they're not in series that's odd okay well, there's some shunt resistors on there i guess to offset it a bit i'm not sure but all that mechanism looks good um so let's assume that that bit works this all looks intact there's nothing obviously weird there so if we have a look at the at where my blooming pencil's gone hang on Ugh. let's do some marking up in here so i'm going to need that in a minute so let's have a look let's trace them we've got orange orange apparently goes to the um one of the potentiometers the horizontal so it'd be that one that one there that's the horizontal there and they're not the same color at all <laughs> which is annoying um right okay green so it's got green here when you look at the tracing where is it oh god i've lost it now so yeah light green goes to vertical green goes to horizontal um, and that's terminated on light blue and then you've got orange there for horizontal position and uh, yeah it's light green actually this and that's common together so yeah none of those colors are right <laughs> so there we go so there's a bit of a challenge there already i'm going to have to figure out what what is what and reverse engineer it um which is going to be interesting let's just take this horrible elastic band off because that's all perished in there i think that cable is probably long enough well yeah it's gonna to have to be long enough i, I don't want to yeah no that's fine i mean it is, it is long enough for what we need i saw online as well the uh some mechanism some some basic code to actually scan it uh, so that would obviously be the next step so how do you get data and you can get data out of the joystick that's uh, with some fs uh, fx commands that's that's fairly straightforward but then we need uh, need a command to get the um, get the data off the user port, so you know what they clicked on. So there we go. So that's another challenge. Anyway, let us go to the horizontal common, which is fifteen. So horizontal common is white. Horizontal common. What is that? That doesn't mean anything. Horizontal uh, wiper position. So that on the potentiometer, that'll be the one in the middle, okay? And then that one, that's the common, that's common together. Get this around the wrong way, that's not gonna work. <laughs> so yeah, what's happening here is, uh, I, I don't know which, which way round that goes to. So you've got pin eight, which is common that side, and pin bleh, 14 is the, is the other side. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to make an educated guess and I've got to put a stake in the ground at some point. I don't quite know where, but let's just say it is 14 is going to be grey. And the other one is going to be black. I may be wrong. So the other common, common thing there is green on pin 8. And that's going to be black. So I'm going to star those because they may be they may be wrong. They may have to be swapped round. But if we plug it in and the, and left is right, uh, up is down, we'll know that things have gone a bit awry. Okay, so that's that one. And the next one. <sighs> so if we take oh god, how the hell does that work? Um, I'm not sure that's all that diagram in retrospect is all that useful. Ah, right, here we go. Yeah, I knew there was another one somewhere. So this is the matrix decoder. So this is how all the buttons are together. So you can see see there, 
um, it's that way and you've got that dip there so you've got a bit a button there and a button there no button there but a button there so that's that bit there so you can see here you got it eh, eh, that's the dip so that's interesting so we might better use that to have a look uh, and cross-reference with that so let's take let's take white so white is pin three okay so pin three is going to be at the top of this thing which commons together we've got the top two pins there top two buttons and that common there to white and white is three according to my diagram there so white is three which commons these two together the only one that commons those two so those are the top two buttons these I should point out are just bridges so whenever we see these they're just bridged across do do so that goes onto there that's the outer one that's the outer. so that that commons that one I think that's red so that comes into there the track goes to there jumps across to there and to there so that is red I believe but it also needs to go on to 10 which is there apparently uh, I'm not sure about that. That's a bit weird. Ten. No, 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 no. So what's the other one now? Hmm. That's very interesting. That doesn't make that much sense. So how does this? So let, let's hang on. Let's just go back a step. We've got white and yellow on this this diagram Let me move this around a bit white white and yellow on this diagram here so how does that relate to this what are the pickups for that one so that's the current path there so white yellow to there so when you push that button it can flow this way similarly if you push that button it flows that way okay so let's trace that through so that's if red is the common between that one but red commons all of these ah that's all these down here okay so white is red because that does common that sorry i was getting confused because if you look here that that comes the red comes down there to this track up to here across to there because of that bridge but then all the way down here all these other buttons so that is what that is that's good okay so that is red god it's rather confusing there you go number four oops so yellow is something Yellow is 13, so we're currently at 13, right? Oops, I don't want to do that because I'm going to confuse myself. Number 13. And we're back. <laughs> okay, I just spent the last 10 minutes jabbering away at finishing the soldering of the, uh, of the plug. <sighs> so a quick recap. So what I did was I got... Let me just tidy up a little bit. So what I got was the circuit diagram here for how the switches are connected using the color codes there, cross-referencing to this wiring diagram showing the, the colors and then the pins on the 15 pin connector. And then using that, going to the actual color code of the wires themselves because it's, it's not it's not an original wire i don't think or or at least the colors are different um and soldered it up so yeah you missed all that because my camera ran out of space so that was not well planned <laughs> oh well live and learn i suppose hopefully there's enough space on it now for a little bit anyway this is the strain relief um, I actually lost it and I had to, had to find another one, but um, I 
I think this one will fit. Uh, I, I find these so difficult to they just, they just explode all the time. So you've got these weird things where you, you have uh, metal bits. One is, 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 is just a hole and the other one is threaded uh, and they sort of go inverted. So that goes in there like that, screw. And then on the other side, it goes into the threaded bit and it's the reverse on the opposite side. Yeah. I always struggle to get these on. <laughs> and that so that goes in like that. Hmm, I don't know that. Don't you? That's uh, Alexa. Shut up, Alexa. <laughs> to say the most weird things occasionally. We're being listened to. Anyway, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Right, so that goes in there like that. That goes in there like that. So when you do it up, that provides strain relief for that which is really cool it's, it's a it's a really neat nice little neat solution um so i've got the those pins go in there and you've got those bits that go out there so i'll show you that in a minute the first thing i'm going to do is just do this up let me take that off and then we can do up the other side okay that's good so that goes like that these bits, this is where it goes. Where the hell's the top bit? What's happened to the top? What's happened to the other side of that thing? Oh, for goodness sake. It shot off the blooming desk again. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing very well here. It's just disappeared. There's some kind of weird warp field in, on my desk where I put stuff down and it disappears. Oh my goodness. Right, hang on a second. And we're back. Found it. Right, so this is a piece of juggling here. Tell you what, let's move all this out of the way. If I do that, maybe you can see better. That goes in there like that. And then you get these pins here that you put through these metal bits and they've got to be that way round. And that goes in there like that. And there, there was actually, a, if you look at this, there was actually a, a shoulder on there to stop it moving through. Um, they're very difficult because they tend to just fly off. So that goes in past that shoulder and then the pin goes in there. And then you put the top bit on and it generally explodes. Hang on, you've got to make sure that, that stuff is there. Okay, so if those bits are now moving around, then you're good. The other the other bit is that you, you have a nut, a screw that goes in there like that. So it's actually quite nice because you just hold the nut in, give it a twist, job done. So these are these are standard kind of connectors. I've got I've got a few 9-pin D ones, 25-pin D ones. Not a few sort of weird, like I think I've got a 19 pin one and stuff. Yeah, I've got a few of those. They're actually really useful. They're not the nicest, but I mean, you know, once it's on, it's all right. So that now needs to be tested. But I think the idea, I'm not entirely sure because the documentation is sparse, but that will go into, um, I believe, that goes into the back of the unit like that. Back of the back of the oops, sorry, like that. So that's the back of the BBC. So you this is pretending to be a, a joystick, right? So this goes in the back of the beep as if it's a joystick, and then this one plugs into there, and that goes underneath into the oh, I'm sorry, I'm still on uh, into the user port, right? And then we've got to figure out well, we've got to figure out first whether whether the joystick itself will, will work because it should. I'm assuming it should just work uh, as an ordinary joystick. So we test that first without this bit, and then we test it with this in place and see if we can yeah, get hold of or write some software to actually do the testing. So let's let's do that next. Here's a simple test 
of uh, the BPC. So I've got a program here. I list that. Oops, we I don't want to type. I list that very very simple program which monitors the joystick. So I've got a test joystick here. Well, a test joystick. A joystick that was uh, off an old um, uh, one of those Atari Plinky. Well, not Atari. I'm not sure what it was. I think it might be like a Super Sport or something like that, or Telesport, maybe Telesport. Uh, one of those ping pong plinky plonky things, because you've got serve and fire, so you do it a beep 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 kind of thing. And I adapted it for the BBC. I love the aesthetic. It's a really nice joystick actually. It's very smooth. So if you do that, you can see the numbers. At the top they're changing, and that one at the bottom is the fire. Okay, so that's all good. We know that works. So next thing to do is to plug in the new joystick. Hey, there we go, look. So that so that worked, numbers are doing, going and the fire button works. That's only one fire button. Oh, yeah, so that one and that one are linked. And so is that one, so that's the common fire button. So some of those buttons work. That's really cool. I'm, I mean, actually, you know what? This joystick feels really solid. Very, very nice action. That's great. What's What's weird is about this one, is there is there is a return to center on these so you do it let it go and it goes blink like that okay with this joystick you go Ew, and that's it it just doesn't move back to center so it's kind of good it's good and bad this is actually very good for flight sims because you can move around and keep it there and be very precise this list less so this is more arcadey i suppose the next thing to do is to uh change that program and see plug in the uh Volt mace device, and then we'll see whether we can get some data out of it. So the adapter is plugged in the back there, and uh, into the user port underneath. Um, I've got it all rigged up. I don't want to move it at the moment. Anyway, so I've managed to find um, some documentation. It's all, it's all very dodgy. Some dodgy scans from yesteryear, and I've come up with a simple program. I'll put it in the blog. And uh, this this program, essentially, it's a little bit of a weird one. Let me just try and explain it to you. Um, right, so here uh, it sets the user port. Um, so the user port is underneath the BBC ribbon cable into that adapter module. And those two sockets on either side, there's one going that way, one going that way, um, means you can have two separate joysticks. So I could plug that other joystick in as well, which is quite cool. Anyway, it's a bit complicated, but what you've got to do is here you you can read the fire button there using the ADVAL uh, value. Also use ADVAL for the X and Y coordinate and print that to the screen. But then you go to this uh, procedure, PROC keypad, which is, which is um, from the example. And what you do is you, um, first, of all, first of all, you read each you set each column that you want to get data from in the keypad you set the column with that value say right i'm going to read this column now um and then you set a a and x value you read y from there and then you call that procedure so those are actually registers it's really quite cool the way the bbc does that in, in basic so you're calling that register you're saying right i'm going to set this one uh as an output Okay, um, to strobe the column, and then you use the, ne the next command where you you then read the data back. And the value comes back in R, uh, and there's a, a weird little thing there which does some bitmap, uh, bit masking, bit masking, um, and then I've just said if it's less than 15 because that's that's the normal value that comes back, then you're going to set the value, set the button. Now it's a bit odd. The example actually used uh, was from a, a game and it was a really sort of dodgy scan uh, let, me, let me just show you what that looks like it's this thing here so I don't know whether you can see that um, oh, I'll just move the flipping what's it hang on yeah so you can see here that's a really dodgy looking scan um, but anyway so this this what this program does is it gets the values of um, each row Okay, so it doesn't decode the whole thing, but it does get some data back. So if I run this now, you can see you've got the normal XY. That's all good. That's working. 
uh, you've got the f the fire button there, which comes back at this value here. Okay, right. But then these ones, if I press those, you can see that value changing. So it knows what row you're on. Um, it's it's just a you click and it changes. So what it's not doing is discriminating the actual column. It's only discriminating the row. And I think that's as a result of of this example program, which is like a bowling game uh, that came with the VoltMace stuff. So this is actually the VoltMace uh, Delta 14B. That is the documentation for that. It's, it's quite technical. Um, and I think the way they've done it is is just uh, you use this for to set the bowling up, and you use these buttons here, sort of going from from minimum power, medium. Bit more power to maximum power for the actual throw of the bowl. The bowling ball is quite cool, but that means we're not addressing the whole thing. So I'm going to work on that. I think the wiring is is all good because we're getting we're getting data back. I wondered whether the column was actually broken. I think it's just the nature of the program itself. But you can see here there's data coming back from the user port. So I think I'm going to mark this up as a, as a win. This is working. Yes, it's got covered in burn marks, <laughs> but I'm going to try and find some Vault Mace software. That actually utilizes this. Um, I know there was some on cartridge, but there must be some games that use this. If you know of any, then please let me know. Um, and yeah, cool. So it's it's working. So it came out of a bin. It was all unloved and burned. Um, but you know, as is the BBC's won't. It's pretty flipping bombproof. Cool. See you next time. Cheers.